So we're continuing to progress through our photosynthesis unit, and we've moved on to the Calvin cycle. We talked about the light reactions a little bit. We talked about how they um, facilitate um, the Calvin cycle, how they allow it to occur. So we're going to talk about um, first the big picture with a little bit of a review on the Calvin's or on the light reactions, excuse me, and how they they help with the Calvin cycle. We can see this whole thing happening inside the chloroplast of a plant cell uh, and some photosynthetic bacteria of course with the light reactions in these thylakoid membranes producing adenosine triphosphate and this coenzyme NADPH to help run the Calvin cycle. Obviously um, water gets split in the photoexcitation uh, within the, the thylakoid membranes we have oxygen being released as a waste product and we will move on to the Calvin cycle, which occurs, remember, in the stroma that's spaced um, outside the thylakoid membranes. Okay, the light reactions, here they are, thylakoid membranes. Um, it's a phospholipid bilayer. We have this kind of battery type situation being created with the pumping of hydrogen ions into this thylakoid space, into the lumen, and then these hydrogens then leaving through ATP synthase, phosphorylating ADP to make ATP, and this ATP heading to the Calvin cycle. We also have the reduction of NADP plus by ferrodoxin um, with an aid from this uh, enzyme NADP reductase to make the coenzyme NADPH, which also goes to the Calvin cycle. So, quick review. We get to the Calvin cycle. An overview before we, we delve in um, deeper into the different elements of the cycle itself. The goal is to utilize the products of the light dependent reactions, which we just discussed, to convert carbon dioxide into a metabolic sugar. Um, typically, we're going to talk about the sugar glucose, um, which is kind of the, the generic um, monosaccharide that's talked about as a, as a product of photosynthesis three phases of this cycle. The first one is carbon fixation. And when we're talking about fixing carbon, we're talking about grabbing it out of the atmosphere and, and converting atmospheric carbon into um, a more tangible molecule like a sugar that, that the plant can utilize for energy. That's carbon fixation. Extremely important uh, process. Essential for life on Earth. The second phase is reduction. Um, we're talking about reducing. Remember oil rig, oxidation is a loss of electrons. Reduction is a gain of electrons. Remember we talked about reducing power that's created by the light reactions. Remember reducing power comes from NADPH. So we'll expect to see that coenzyme involved in the reduction phase. And finally, regeneration of RUBP. RUBP is the carbon dioxide acceptor. We have to regenerate it for it to be a cycle. If we weren't regenerating the initial participants of this process, it wouldn't be cyclical. It would just run out. Okay, so keep these three phases in mind. We're going to try to work through them, and hopefully uh, you'll come to an understanding by the time we get to at the end of it. So here's the Calvin cycle in full. Um, don't get intimidated as you look at this whole thing. We're going to break it down piece by piece. We're going to look at the different phases. We're going to trace carbons uh, as we work through here. I want you to keep in mind the number of carbons that we're working with. Keep in mind the input of energy. Keep in mind um, where uh, the reducing power is being used. What are the inputs? What are the outputs? Um, what enzymes are necessary? This is These are the, the main parts of this whole thing. Now, we set it cyclical, and we're starting with this 5-carbon molecule. Ribulose bisphosphate, R-U-B-P for short. Ribulose bisphosphate, let's, um, let's kind of derive this name. Ribose uh, means five carbon sugar. One, two, three, four, five carbons. Okay, that's where the ribulose part comes from. Bisphosphate, two phosphates. Okay, it's a ribose with two phosphates. Ribulose bisphosphate. RUBP. RUBP 
interacts and, and reacts with CO2. All right. Now, when we when we look at this this cycle, we're talking about three CO2s coming in and in quick succession. Okay, three coming in in quick succession. Each one is reacting with an RUBP. So we have a five carbon RUBP. We have a, a single carbon from CO2. This step is enzymatically aided by this enzyme, Rubisco. And we know um, that enzymes end in ACE. So Rubisco is a shortened term for the enzyme that helps us. And the enzyme's full name is ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. Ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. You don't need to know that. Just know Rubisco. But that name is easily explained because here's what's happening. Ribulose bisphosphate is getting carboxylated. It's getting an, a carbon added to it. Here it is right here. So we go from ribulose bisphosphate to this short-lived intermediate, which is a six-carbon molecule. It got carboxylated by ribulose bisphosphate carboxylase. Now, this intermediate is unstable. Okay, So we have three five-carbon sugars. Each one gains a carbon from carbon dioxide. Now we have three six-carbon sugars. So let's keep track. Oh, let's, let's go forward here. Okay, um, We had 15 carbons here. We added three from carbon dioxide. Now we have 18 carbons. 18 carbons. This three six carbon molecules, like once again, very unstable, they break up into six three carbon molecules, still at 18. Six times three is 18. This is three phosphoglycerate, which is what's created. Three phosphoglycerate is. We can call it 3PG for short, 3PG. In this process, we've pulled carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, and we've turned it, we've, we've incorporated it into a molecule, a carbohydrate, that the plant is then going to be able to use metabolically for energy. We've fixed it out of the atmosphere. Rubisco is a really quite amazing molecule okay if you think about what it does it pulls something out of a, a, a gaseous state and incorporates it into a molecule that can be used for food rubisco is probably the most abundant protein on the face of the earth and is definitely the key to life itself okay without rubisco no way we're here okay so we're at 3pg we've finished the carbon fixation phase we've pulled it out of the atmosphere it's fixed now into 3PG, 3-phosphoglycerate. One phosphate, you can see. We're, we're going to transition from 3-phosphoglycerate. We've entered the reduction phase. 3-phosphoglycerate becomes 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Right? We're going to call this BPG. Right? 18 carbons. We're still at 18. Okay. Still at 18 because we still have six three carbon molecules. How did this extra phosphate get added? Well, we had dephosphorylation of ATP. ATP loses phosphates to this. So it energizes these via phosphates. Where did this ATP come from? You remember from the light reactions. Okay, so there's a first time we need those elements from the light reactions. They come into play right here in the reduction phase. So now we have six molecules of BPG. Now here comes our reducing power. Here comes our coenzyme NADPH. Okay, drops off its electrons here, um, converts BPG to G3P. There, G3P. Not only does it reduce BPG, but it also causes it to lose phosphates, inorganic phosphates here. Okay, so gone. Now we have G3P. G3P is, is the, 
the main part, the main export of this cycle. G3P can become lots of different organic molecules. And notice we're still at 18 carbons, okay? Because we have six three carbon G3Ps. One of them's gonna leave. One of them's gonna leave, and it's gonna help to, uh, to produce glucose or other organic molecules. Five of them continue on. Remember we said this is cyclical. Five of them continue on, so we've gone from having 18 to now we have 15, okay? G3P is, can kind of be considered half of a glucose, all right? So we had three carbohydrates came in to produce one G3P, which is half of a glucose. So if you think about it, glucose is C6H12O6 six carbons. So far we have three. How many more carbon dioxides need to enter? Three more. So essentially it takes three turns of the Calvin cycle to make one G3P, six turns of the Calvin cycle to make one glucose because it takes six turns to make two G3P, two G3P to make one glucose. If that's confusing, we're going to go over that again. We've made G3P. We have our important output, our important export to make glucose. Five of the G3P have entered back in the Calvin cycle. Look, we have 15 carbons. That's what we need to begin with, okay? Because we start with three RUBPs. We start with three five-carbon sugars. Well, now we have five three carbon sugars. Five times three is 15. This needs some rearrangement, which requires energy. Where's the energy going to come from? Boom. ATP requires the energy. We have rearrangement. We have bonds being broken. We have new bonds being formed. And bada bing, bada boom, we have three RUBP once again for the whole process to start over again. This was the regeneration phase of RUBP. Regeneration obviously essential in cyclical processes. Okay? So that's the Calvin cycle. Uh, 3PG to BPG to G3P back to RUBP. Keep track of those carbons. Keep track of the ATPs, the NADPHs. Okay? Um, in making glucose, as we said before, three turns makes one G3P. So then it makes sense that six turns make two G3Ps, which is equal to one glucose. And why is G3P so important? It can become, it's a very diverse, a very dynamic molecule. It can become glucose. It can become fructose. Um, it can become disaccharides, polysaccharides like starch and cellulose. It can become the, 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 the pieces of lipids in fatty acids. It can become the building blocks of proteins like amino acids. Extremely diverse. Extremely important. And you're going to see when we talk about cellular respiration as we revisit this drawing, evolution has kind of given us a little bit of a glimpse um, because you're going to see in cellular respiration, and specifically in glycolysis, you're going to see G3P, you're going to see BPG and 3PG, but in opposite order, okay, in glycolysis. So very uh, related systems energetically, similar uh, molecular processes going on because evolution, because we're not really all that far removed from these types of organisms, these photosynthetic organisms. We're all related, and this is just more proof of it. So hopefully that helped you to understand Calvin cycle and how it relates to the light reactions and photosynthesis in general.